This is the IFF TV podcast. Hello, Mac Irish Football Fan TV. We're here with another season preview. This time it's Bose. I'm joined by Daz O'Hartnada, who is, and I, I would like to say I said that quite perfectly. Um, you did. <laughs> but you are you, you are the admin for the Bose Facebook group. So do you want to tell our listeners, maybe who don't know where to find the group, what it's about, what you do, and where they can find it? Thanks, Paul. Uh, firstly, thanks so much for having me on. So the Bohemian FC fan group is a fan group I made on Facebook two years ago. It currently has 1,700 fans in it, and it's growing every week. Um, it's just a fan group for Bose, Bose fans, League of Ireland news and fans, and Ireland team news and fans. So as I said, I run the group. I put up posts, discussions, pictures. Um, a lot of the older fans put up loads of pictures of stuff that matches that they've been at. It's really good. It's the number one place to go for Bose news, stories, discussions, all that kind of stuff. And it's great for fans interact with each other. It's a dedicated place to go for fan news and Bose news. Yeah, I'm obviously in the group as well. So I don't think it's uh, exclusive to just Bose fans. If you're not a troublemaker and you want to go in and join, I think you can join and there's no hassle there unless you obviously start having a go with people or whatever. Is that, <laughs> that, that's the way you oh, want yeah. to assume. Absolutely. And it's for any League of Ireland fan really that wants to go in and join the group. League of Ireland News, Ireland Team News and Bose News goes up on it. So that's Bohemian FC fan group on Facebook. Perfect. You know, this is our second time recording this because I had an issue with my audio the last day. So that's my <laughs> fault. So we're going to run through it all again. We might run through it a little bit quicker this time because obviously it's our second time around. But uh, I suppose... Let's talk about last season and let's talk about, you know, obviously it's a magnificent season for Bowles and continue to punch above your weight every year, uh, which is great to see from obviously your own point of view. So talk me through last season because we obviously had such a mad season with COVID and stuff like that. So the floor is yeah. yours to talk through last season. Well, just the week gone by there is actually the last week Bowles fans were actually at a match. It was against Sherburne and they won that game. That was the last game of fans. Thanks for reminding and me. So <laughs> but um, yeah look it was a great season um, we finished second in the league we really put up a fervour in Europe and um, took them all the way to penalties with one of the youngest teams in Europe at the time um, they had so many players so many turnover players again this season a lot of individual standout players as well I thought Danny Grant was he was brilliant he was really good Danny Mandrew he was really good till he was out of the team you know he was he probably would play really well with Rovers Twardock was really good. He got his move to a Polish team. We got 40,000, I believe, for him. He was really good. Andrew Wright, who came from England, he was a top player for us too, and he's not here this season either. Annie Lyons is a very good right back. Then even the goalkeeper department, we had two excellent goalkeepers. Keith Long showed he wasn't afraid to keep McGuinness in the game when he was playing really well with balls. He didn't drop him. He didn't deserve it to be dropped. And ultimately, he played very well. We had a few very good results throughout the season. Uh, consistent results. We had a very good run form as well. Um, it's just it was a terrific season and Keith Long did an absolutely excellent job. Can't really fault that all. Second place, really good. I think, you know, as well what he do he done quite well was he brought through a lot of players in terms of players that came in and kept a shirt. Like obviously we we'd said um Stephen McGuinness came in, done really, really well in goals and kept James Talbot out of the out of the team for most of the season. You know, even played in Europe, came in. He he actually I had him as one of my nominations for goalkeeper of the year on, on our team of the season because if you actually look at his record it was quite good in terms of clean sheets and, and, and games played and then obviously to keep James Talbot out of the team who's probably the goalkeeper of the season the season before obviously shows you have a good bit of strength and depth or did at least last season have a lot of strength and depth obviously we'll come to transfers and, and ins and outs and re-signs and stuff in a little while but we, you must have been impressed at the likes of, you know, even Anto Breslin coming in there, doing a job at left back. Um, for me, your wingers were absolutely unbelievable up until the point where Twardak had to go uh, out to po or off to Poland. For, for the, At least yeah. he's got a fee as well, which was good. But he only came in to start the last season. And I would have said if he had to stay for the full season, I probably would have said he would have been the sign of the season. Absolutely. You know, I actually think... It was a good financial decision to let him go. Like we got five grand from him. That is a lot in League of Ireland money, you know. Any player that goes, it's good to get a fee for them. It's not usual you get fees for players in the League of Ireland. So you've got an offer for a player, you have to really examine it and look at it and see does it make sense to let him go. Obviously, his contract was going to be up in a few weeks' time, so that was all looked at. He went out for forty grand, and then obviously Promise came in. He did he did a good job. There was a few players floating around that position. 
but ultimately anyone who stepped in did a very, very good job. You couldn't really fault anyone last season. I thought most players really played really well every week. There was a high consistency of performances from everyone, from the goalkeepers upwards. And, you know, to have two goalkeepers really pushing each other for the number one shot, even in the league, really says something. So, ultimately, it was very, very good. All the players performed really well, and we finished second. I know you could say it's a half season. It was. But, really, we played really well, and we deserved to finish second. And I hope to be up there again this season. Yeah. So we'll talk about the, I suppose, the, the outs, the players that have left, you know, and then we'll kind of come around to the re-signed and the players in. So just in terms of your, your players out, and again, shout out to Andrew Dempsey for, for putting all these out on the footballscope.blogspot.com. Um, he's done all the transfers there for the first division and the Premier Clubs. So, I mean, just your players out, and I think there's a, a lot of players here who kind of had a lot of, I suppose, Bo's DNA, you would say. Uh, Dinny Corcoran, who was obviously there for a long time, has gone to Drogheda. Michael Barker's gone to Shelburne. JJ Looney's gone to Shelburne. Paddy Kirk's gone to Longford Town. Danny Mandreo's gone to Rovers. I'm sure you won't want to talk about that one. Uh, Danny Grant's gone to Huddersfield. Andre Wright gone to Air United. And then Catalago Mashigo has gone to Waterford. So, kind of, out of those players, who, who are you kind of really sad to see? And I think uh, Dan Casey's missing off that list uh, yeah. as well. Probably really, you know, as a fan, it'd be Dinny because he's a fan favourite. He's someone that will always score goals and he was someone that'd be great to have around the team, especially being that bit older, that bit more mature around the younger lads helping them come through. But look at the team, like Manju was really good before he came up, but we didn't really miss him when he didn't really play. Dawson Devay came in, he stepped in, he did a great job. It didn't look like we particularly missed him, so but he is one of there. I think the biggest one would be Danny Grant. You know, he was a terrific winger. He was really, really good. A goal scoring winger. He could score all types of goals. He would get in behind. T- tricky, fast player. He's very, very hard to replace a player like him. He, you know, he, he was really good. He's probably going to be one I'm going to miss probably the most. Um, yeah, I'd say Andrew Wright. You know, he was really good too. I really liked him on the team. He just, he just really fitted in with us. He's one that's obviously going to really miss too because look at our forwards now that we'll get to in a minute. Um, the, you know, they have a big boots to fill. So really, I think it's Danny Grant's the one and Dinny probably. I know Dinny didn't really play much of a part last season, but he would have been great to have this season. But Danny Grant for me is the big one that we're missing. Well, I think you're right in saying that because you think when Danny Mandreo went out of the team, I think everyone was like, why is he not playing? He has to, He's usually like the first name on the sheet. He's the one that makes the difference. He's, you know, that's what I predicted fans would have been like. And yeah, after the COVID uh, situation, he was just completely, you know, in- invisible, really. Yeah, like he wasn't even making the sub bench. You know, he was there training. Bowles was still putting up pictures of him in training. He was still playing for Ireland in the rage. He wasn't injured. He just simply wasn't in the team. Um, so yeah, I think there was a breakdown of um, how would you say relationships or something because it was obviously the thing about the gargle thing, and then he put out a tweet saying, you know, this is this is you know bad news for my character so, type of thing. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I think there was a there was something going on in the background that's not obviously being confirmed, but I think it kind of showed when he went to your arch rivals that something clearly wasn't right and obviously it hasn't been revealed or whatever what it was but something hasn't been sitting right and that was the case but Danny Grant in my opinion he just stepped up to the plate when he was needed at most um, you know to finish second in a, in a season where you know, you've got the likes of Dundalk and Shamrock Rovers there and there was a period where you were kind of pushing Shamrock Rovers for a little bit as well so it wasn't a case of they had it all their own on, on their own way sorry um, I mean look at it at Bose, he had a really strong season last year and I think any side maybe bar Dundalk and Shamrock Rovers every other team are fearful of either going to Daly Mount or of Bose going to, to their stadium do you know what I mean and I'd say even at that I'd say Rovers and, and Dundalk were as well anyway that's the thing yeah look we pushed the Rovers right to the very end more or less I know they had the game like the league won before all the games were played more or less but you know it wasn't like we went on a bad run of form or Rovers got collectively a number of points way ahead of us that didn't happen we we kept performances up we kept putting teams out we kept getting results and we obviously finished up second right behind them on the table so it's very encouraging science to see but one of the biggest issues for Bowes every season is um, the high turnover of players we seem to lose a lot of our star players every year 
Now, I don't really mind players going to the UK or England to better themselves. That's going to happen everywhere. But, you know, when you start losing your strength and depth of players to other teams around you, that's when it comes a bit of an issue. What happens every single season, and Keith Long always pulls players out, I don't know where he does be getting them. We got some eye for a player, whoever's back there doing it, it's doing a great job. But that's something that, that happens to Bulls every season. We tend to lose a lot of players. Yeah, but I think in that as well, you know, he's kind of gained players obviously through the St. Kevin's boys system there. He's obviously got a lot of players coming in that way. Um, let's yeah. talk about your play, your, your, let's talk about your re players and we'll talk about the, uh, the players in then and then. I know eight uh, players from the under 17s, I think, were signed up yesterday. So um, I don't know if they're on this list, but we can talk about them anyway. But uh, yeah. afterwards, so we've got re signed anyway uh, Keith Buckley, massive player for you, Anto Breslin, James Talbot, Promise Amashir, Ross Tierney, Connor Levingston, Stephen McGuinness, Dawson Devoy, Rob Cornwall, James Finnerty, Kieran Kelly, Jack Moylan, Keith Ward, Andy Lyons. So, kind of of those players, because I, I think what we'll do is in terms of re signed, we won't put those eight young lads there as re signed. We'll put them in with the transfers in and I'll get them up on Twitter while you're talking about um, the, the, the re signed players and kind of who you think is key there to obviously have kept around. Yeah, well, I think um, a lot of people probably would dismiss this one. I think McGuinness was a good re signing. You know, he could have went to another team in the league, even Dundalk, and did a job he showed he's well capable of it. I thought it was very good to get him back. Um, Andy Lyons, he signed back very late. He was obviously assessing his options and, you know, why not? He was talks of him going to England. There was a few clubs sniffing around him. So he was he was a key player to have back as well. And obviously Keith Buckley, the club captain, he's going to be probably one of the big, biggest re for us and his supporters. And we keep the likes of him and his team at the club because he's someone you can always rely on and he can, he'll always do a job for any team. He always seems to be there for balls. So... To me, they would the, they would probably be the top key resilience for us anyway. Well, I think you know you talk you know Keith Ward. I think is someone there who really and Wardy too. Wardy as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he. I think he's one who really kind of holds that squad together in terms of he is the kind of link man in terms of youth and experience. And he's not even that old. I'd say he's about twenty nine. Um, yeah. You're kind of looking at him and he's the one who kind of, I've watched him with other players. I know, look, Danny Grant and stuff like that. He seemed to be quite close with those types of players, but he just seems like a very funny type of guy. And he seems like he is the one that kind of runs the, the dressing room there, obviously with the likes of Rob Cornwall and stuff like that. So I think they have a really nice mixture there of players who kind of get what Bowes are all about and obviously get what, what Keith Long is all about. That's why he keeps them around the club. And let's not forget Bucko as well, who... Was right up there for you know in the in the team of the season he was right up there for that midfield spot as well and and he was kind of getting in and performances he was putting in week in week out he was getting himself into you know player of the month nominations consistently throughout the season yeah yeah you know like they're proven players who can play at this level and they always step up for balls and they always play really really well Keith Warren as we touched on he's he's one of the older players there um attacking midfield left and right wing, left and right attacking midfield, just behind a striker, central midfield. He's a very versatile player. He's someone that can play a, a range of positions. That's important to have when you're a club like Bowes. You know, if, if, you're relying, if your team is very young and you're relying on younger players to push them on, sometimes you might need a bit of a, a more experienced head to be able to put into position or even bring on in the game. And he's someone that's a set-piece taker as well that it's important to have in the team. So he was really good. And obviously the other signs, like are the key players that we kept, Rob Cornwell, James Talbot, they're obviously all very important too. And they could have went elsewhere and it's it's great to have them in the team too. They're all really key players for us. Mm, it's, not, it's not even like, in my opinion, that they could have went anywhere else. I don't think they would have wanted to go anywhere else. I think they really liked the club. I know James Talbot you know, really loves the club. I think he fell out, out of love with football for a little while and Bose gave him that kind of feeling back and I think he's really really grateful for that and he, every time I look at his social media stuff it's all promoting bows and giving back and I think I just think that's really cool that you know these players like him who you know not that long ago he was getting called up by Ireland because of his performance was for bows as well I just think it's cool that he gives back in that sense you know absolutely James Talbot is a keeper that's he's he's loved at bows all the fans love him the younger players and younger fans look up to him he went over to England, didn't seem to work out for him that well. He was at Sunderland. He went to a spell at a Van Ramley club, it's done league over there. Came back to here, he played GA with Ballymun, I think it was, and Kickham's yeah. and whatever they are. And Keith Long brought him back and he 
Shane Supple actually retired that season and he was obviously someone who was going to be very hard to replace. He was probably the top keeper in the league, in my opinion, when he was playing here. He was really, really, mm-hmm. really good. He'd push any keeper in this league and he'd very big boost to fill, especially into a first-team senior men's environment. But he stepped to play and he's very consistent. He's a top keeper and he loves the club and it's excellent to see. It's really, really good. Yeah, and again, Supple, another player who who went on to get called up by, by Ireland as well. But we'll just talk about the transfers in. And what I'll do is I have the eight players here that were, um, I suppose, they're graduates now that are so in professional terms with the first team. So um, Keen Moore and Reese Byrne, goalkeepers, defenders. Sean Green and Gavin O'Brien, midfielders. Jamie Mullins, Colin Conroy and Aaron Dorn. And then uh, winger forward, Robbie Mahan. And then just kind of while I have the ins there, Tyreek Wilson from Waterford, Thomas Alua from Shamrock Rovers, Georgie Kelly from Dundalk, Ali Cute from Waterford, Rory Feely from St. Pat's, Stephen Mallon from Sheffield United, Bastian Heary from Linfield, Liam Burt from Celtic, and Bardley Rolt from Peterborough United. So as well as obviously bringing through those players, he has actually brought through players who kind of know the league there we spoke about Ali Coote and uh or sorry I spoke about them uh Tyreek Wilson who had a great season with Waterford last year and then uh, Georgie Kelly who obviously knows what the back of the net is as well and and has left Dundalk because he just he, he he could have been happy enough being on the bench there I know he went on loan to Pat but he wanted to get out and play and score goals and stuff like that so I think he'll be aiming to prove himself a lot this season you know absolutely um I think we made a few very good signs this season we always need to make a few good signs, but I think we've made a few very good signs this season. You got Mallon, who could play left wing, left midfield. He's injured now. He's probably going to be out till mid May, I think. And um, we've got R- Rory Feely. He's going to come in. He could play right back, centre back. It's a good option to have. Ali Coote, very, very good player. We all know what he can do. Bastian Heary, he's someone who can really ping a ball and he can score goals. He can set up goals. He's a very good player to have. And yeah, I, I'm actually very happy with all the signs. Bert, he's a good player too, from what I've seen so far. Doesn't necessarily know the league yet, but I think he'll start in really well. And yeah, I, I'm very happy with the signs we've made. And obviously then, you would have seen some of the players. I, I think you're from Leash yourself, and you, you've got a couple of Leash boys now signed, I suppose. I think you're very happy with on social media there. So I think watching Colin Conroy and who is the other Leash-born? Andy Doran. Doran, Doran. Aaron Doran um, yeah. So, like, those were two players that were really, really good in that game. I think it was against Shamrock Rovers, the under-17s uh, league final, or was it a cup final? That's right, yeah. Yeah, it was. I think it was the league final, yeah. But, yeah, look, they're two very good players. They're from Port Leash. They played for a Port Leash club. And I would have played there and coached there when I was younger, too. And they moved to St. Kevin's there, I think it was two years ago. And they really pushed on. And congratulations to them for signing professional terms of balls it, it shows that there is talent outside of dublin and it's absolutely excellent to see and i wish them all the best and hopefully i'll be there when it makes a debut for the club like a the proper first team debut and i don't see any reasons why they can't push themselves on into the team keep long obviously see something in them and fair play to them i'm very very happy for them i think it shows the hard work and, and the link there that is kind of have with St. Kevin's because there's obviously been a lot of players that have came through. I think on that um, piece there, it says, you know, Warren O'Hara, Danny Grant, Evan Ferguson. There are only three uh, that were mentioned there have all gone to the UK and done well. Obviously, Evan Ferguson was the most recent one and showed that age doesn't really matter. If you're good enough, you're old enough, you can come in. And if you do well and impress, then you could be off straight away do you know what I mean and look I know look you as a Bose fan that might upset you in some ways the fact that they're not going to stick around for probably as long as you would want them to but I think if you're getting a fee for them then I don't think you'll be as upset as as much as you would actually like to see them stick around for a little bit longer but I think now with you know Brexit and all that type of stuff and, and play, players are going to need now a place to kind of go and play and you, I think you're seeing it more and more as we're getting a lot of players coming over from England playing in Ireland using it as a league in which players can excel and develop Joe Hodge coming from from Man City to Derry prime example of just kind of the way things have changed that goalkeeper from Liverpool has come with the Pats um, so so it's continuously happening so I think the fact that players are going up going over from Ireland to England it's good because I think it brings eyes on both sides if you get me Absolutely, yeah, it, it really does. And, you know, I think Bowes, the last three, four seasons, have actually signed a high volume of players from the UK, young Irish players who didn't really work out for them over there. They came back here, 
they got yeah. into the first team and they played really well and if they were good enough they got to move back or they moved to a different club but you know you've got your likes of James Tabba he came back he's he's playing he's regular he's one of the league's best goalkeepers best players Danny Manju you know he came back he played he's a very good player too right they're just to name two players that came back, but a lot of players seem to come back two balls and push on. And the link with St. Kevin's boys is it's very important for us. Um, they produce a lot of players and a lot of their either better young players go to England straight away, but we get the best of the rest after them. Or if there's players that don't necessarily want to go to England straight away, they might come to balls for a season or two and try and break into the first team. And as we said, Evan Ferguson, he got his move. Um, he's a good player. I, I think he'll do well for himself. But Derek Penrith doing really really good stuff there he's the first team transition coach now so players that are coming through will be working under him get into the first team and you know i put up a video today and they're looking at the players who made a transition themselves there's andy Lyons who stepped right into the first team and all the other players and they'll be hoping to push them over the first team and try and make one of the shirts their own or get a place in the bench or pressing the cup so absolutely excellent setup and it's, it's really really good you know, I I know we we mentioned this in the first time you recorded, but just to kind of how big a sign in Andy Lyons could be, considering the fact that everyone thought like Danny Grant, he was going to be off to the UK. That was the end of him, and uh, he was going on to bigger and better things. And then, kind of, I don't know what happened throughout the transfer window or the break off. Um, maybe he had a change of heart and said, "Look, I'll stay for a couple more years and see what happens." But you know, he came in last season and big boots to fill in terms of Derek Pender. And I thought he'd done really, really well. He's obviously an Irish underage international. But I think, I think, and we spoke there about players who kind of get the club. And I suppose when you look at players who've gotten the club in recent years, they've gone on to bigger and better things. Uh, Danny Grant obviously gone to Huddersfield. Um, and there's been other players just I can't think off the top of my head. But you're looking at someone like Lyons, who could actually now be a leader and, you know, a voice in the dressing room to those younger lads, you, you know, your Dawson DeVoys, those young lads to coming through at the moment from the under 70s that have been promoted, all those players. I think Andy Lyons is a good example for them of kind of the pathway that he's created for himself and shows that if you do well, there's a future for you in the team. Absolutely. Like, you know, when we, when Derek Pender retired, what was actually stopping Keith Long going out and saying, right, I need to get experience right back now this season. That's be priority. He could have done that. He put his faith in Andy Lyons and said, look, we'll see what you like. And, came in he did a really really good job he impressed he's good at defending he's got a really good work rate he's up and down the field he's got a great engine on him he's a terrific player and he, he shows that it can be done and he'd be someone for the younger players to look up to and aspire to and to try and get their success but he's got a great head on him he's very mature for his age and i think he'll go all the way to the top and he, he's one of my favorite players on balls and he's just a really really good player and I'm delighted he signed back i know he signed back late Assessing options, I don't blame him, but delighted he signed back. Yeah, well, I think you know, I, th- I think people get hung up on these kind of things, and they don't really realise that he's obviously. I know he's a young lad or whatever, but he needs, he does need to pay the bills, I'm sure as well. And he obviously needs, if you can get get more money somewhere else, you're gonna look around somewhere else. I don't really care what people say in that regard. Oh, he's a money grabber, this that and the other. But people, especially when you're younger, you want to try and make as much money because then you don't have to worry about it in the future. You're, you're financially stable. I'd imagine that was the reason anyway, but like I'm only speculating. But yeah, I think it's great that he's back for your sake. I think he's, it's, I think it's a great move. And, you know, I think as far as right backs go, you'll struggle to name too many better than him in the league. So I think it's a massive coup for both to, to be able to resign, considering the fact that he was pretty much said he was on his way to England, you know. But uh, on to just lastly, the where you think, or sorry, where you think that Bowes will finish this season in your own honest opinion in my own honest opinion i do think i think we'll finish third i think third is a realistic spot it's in europe dundalk will want them to be finished first this season they've went into the foreign market will they work out time will tell they've signed a few international players like from the faroe islands and the albanian goalkeeper a few other lads from different countries and stuff, different leagues, they could turn out to be very good players. And Rovers recruited really, really well as well. And they got a few really good individual players. They lost Jack Byrne, but they brought in other players. So they'll be right up there as well. And I think we're just behind them then as well. We can push them all the way and we could beat anyone on their day. But realistically, I think third would be a good position to finish in. And I think it's something that we can definitely do. And just 
I think uh, off the field too, you know, something that came up the other day was we've a thousand members now and it's the most ever in history. And I think there's something worth celebrating and thinking of as well. In the middle of a pandemic, we've got a thousand members. It's really, really good to see. There's, and the offices, the balls open up the other day. There's really positive things happening around the club, off the field as well. And the underage academy graduates going to the first team. There's a lot of good things happening in the balls now. But yeah, third, I think it's where we'll finish, where's where I hope to finish. And I think it's realistic and I think that'd be perfect place to finish. I think that'd be a good finish for us this season. Yeah, I don't think it's a deluded opinion to think that either. I think it's a realistic shout. Obviously, he's finished second this season. It might be a little bit of a back step, but you're not. You're kind of competing differently in terms of budget to the to the other teams like Dundalk and, and Shamrock Rovers and so on. But I think Derry, Derry, and Pats will be kind of rivaling rivaling you for that kind of position. I I feel, but I think it'll be a fascinating season in that sense. I think there's a lot of teams that have strength and there's a lot of teams that kind of are on similar levels, and it'll be kind of who gets the most consistent results. But obviously, by the end of the season be up where they should be but I think it would be fascinating to kind of see that happen and look Dundalk may struggle Shamrock Rovers may struggle too many players in this in the squad you just never know so I think I think Bowes just need to kind of focus on themselves like they did last year they didn't really worry about anybody else they weren't really talking about title races or anything like that we were just look one game at a time one game at a time one game at a time and then ultimately it paid off in the end so I think if you were to finish third I think it would be a good season for you and maybe a, a decent run in Europe yeah, absolutely. I think a few other players we didn't touch on too much was Wilson's a great left back that we signed. You know, he'll be someone that'll hopefully slot into the team. He's one of the better players last season. He's definitely one of the best fullbacks in the league. So to have two of the best fullbacks in the league, it's really good. You know, if you've got Alua, he is up top. Um, I don't know too much about him, but he'll be wanting to make an impression up front. Um, we've got Rolt who came in as well. You know, like they're going to have you know there's players coming in now that have got very big boots to fill again. From last season, like the front, the whole front three is gone. It's completely gone. One of them in second was it's gone. So they've got very, very big boots to fill. And you know, then European football too. You know, if we got fair one of the harder teams in Europe last season, had we got an easier time, maybe we would have got a true. So I'd be hoping to get to that that stage or further this season. I think that'd be realistic as well. I think it's doable, and I'd say that the players would really want to kick on and make sure we finish in Europe first of all at the end of the season, but also kick on in Europe see how far we can get. Yeah, well, listen, Dad, I I can't really say too much more on. It's been great having you on. Um, if you want to give the Facebook group another plug there, just in case and you forgot, so just let them know exactly where they can find it and what the full name of the group is, so they don't confuse it with something else. Thanks, Paul. So that's Bohemian SC fan group, and it's a group on Facebook. So if you go to join the group, I'll add you in. Another admin will add you in. So that's for all the Bose fans, League of Ireland fans, or Ireland team fans. Or if you're just a fan of the league, you know, and recently we've got a good few fans from Madagascar joining the group. They follow Bastion here. It's, it's been good to see. I've had a few of them message me and asking me about the club. So that was interesting. And a few other players and a few other fans are right, scattered throughout the world that have joined the group. And it's excellent to see. So Bohemian SC fan group on Facebook. Mm, long may I continue the growth of fans from other places wanting to learn about the league um, guys let us know your thoughts in the comments on whether you think Bows are going to finish in the top 3 where you'd like them to finish or whatever well, give us your own prediction and who you're most excited about seeing this season and maybe who you're kind of upset about leaving um, don't forget to like the video don't forget to subscribe and check out our other season previews with other fans from other clubs as well we're going through them all at the moment so we nearly have every club done so far so this week coming um, we'll have a lot of them going out so thanks very much Daz for taking the time out to have a chat and guys don't forget to give it a listen and don't forget to join the Facebook group as well we'll talk to you soon take care bye bye this is the IFF TV podcast like rate and subscribe <laughs>